TV English, the solution for humanity. And modern science, compatible or incompatible. Science without religion is lame, and religion without science is blind. The glorious Quran is not a book of science, S C I E N C E, but it's a book of signs, S I G N S. It's a book of ayat. And there are no less than six thousand signs, six thousand ayat, out of which more than a thousand they speak about science. And Stephen Hawkins, a very famous scientist, he writes in his book, The Brief History of Time. He says that the universe is expanding is the greatest discovery of the century, which the glorious Quran mentions fourteen hundred years ago. Father Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Surah An Kabut, chapter number twenty-nine, verse number forty-one: "Mathalul ladina taqazu min dun Allahi awliya, kama sallallahu an Kabut, ittaqazat baita, wa inna uhan al buyud la baitu la an Kabut, lau kano yaglamun." Those who take protectors, anyone besides Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, they are building for themselves houses like the house of a spider, for indeed the house of a spider is flimsy. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. Masal al-ladina taqazu min dun Allahi awliya. Those who take helpers, anyone besides Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, they are building for themselves houses like the house of a spider. And besides saying this, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala talks about the spider, about the house of a spider that it is very flimsy. And today we know the relationship between the spiders; it is very bad. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala talks about the house of a spider that it is very flimsy. In the field of physiology, it was 600 years after the glorious Quran was revealed. Ibn Nafis he discovered regarding blood circulation, and 400 years after Ibn Nafis, 1,000 years after the glorious Quran was revealed, William Harvey made it famous to the world. So in our textbooks we read William Harvey he discovered regarding the blood circulation, but actually it is Ibn Nafis who discovered regarding the blood circulation. This is all media. So actually, it was Ibn Nafis who discovered regarding the blood circulation. And when we eat food, it goes through via the complex media and it goes to the intestine. And as far as blood circulation and the production of milk is concerned, it is mentioned in the Glorious Quran in a nutshell. When we eat food, it goes through via the complex media, very often through the liver and through the intestines, and then it goes to all the organs of the body. Including the mammary glands for the production of milk, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala talks, says in the Glorious Quran, fourteen hundred years ago, in Surah Nahl, chapter number sixteen, verse number sixty-six. وَإِنَّ لَكُمْ فِي الْأَنْعَامِ لَإِبْرَةً نُسْقِيكُمْ مِمَّا فِي بُطُونِ مِنْ بَيْنِ الْفَرْسِ In the cattle, there is an excellent example coming from between the conjunction between the intestine and the blood. We produce milk. That is pure for you to drink. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Surah Muminun, chapter number twenty-three, verse number twenty-one: "Wa inna lakum fil anaam la ibra, nusqikum mimma fi butuniha, wa lakum fiha manafiu kathira, wa minha taqlun." And the cattle. In that, there is an excellent example. We produce milk out of them, and various benefits from them, and out of their meat you eat. In the field of medicine. We know that honey is derived from the belly of the bee. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Surah Nahl, chapter number sixteen, verse number sixty-eight and sixty-nine. 
يخرج من بطونها شراب مختلف ألوانه فيه شفاء للناس. From the belly of the bee, honey is derived in which there is benefit for mankind. Today we know that there are various benefits from honey. It is rich in vitamin K and in fructose. And it also has mild antiseptic properties. No wonder the Russian soldiers in the World War II, they used honey to cure their wounds, which left very little of scar tissue. And if a person has an allergy to a particular plant, and if honey is derived from that plant, he starts attaining resistance from it. So the glorious Quran talks that in the honey there is benefit for mankind 1400 years ago, which science has discovered it recently. In the field of embryology, there were a group of Arab students who followed the words of the glorious Quran from Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 43, and Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 7. If you do not know, ask a person who knows. And they took the various ahadiths and verses related to embryology and they presented it to Professor Dr. Keith Moore. Now Professor Dr. Keith Moore, he was the highest in the world in the field of embryology in the University of Toronto. So they presented these various ahadiths and verses related to embryology to Professor Dr. Keith Moore. And they asked him to comment over it. So he said, that these verses then perfect conformity with modern embryology. And he said, that there's some verses, I can neither say that they are right, neither can I say that they are wrong, because I do not have any knowledge of them. And one such verse was a verse from the glorious Quran, from Surah Iqra, chapter number 96, verse number 1 and 2. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Read in the name of thy Lord who has created. Khalaq al-insana min alaq. Created man form a leech-like substance, something which clings. So Professor Keith Moore, he went into his laboratory and under a very powerful microscope, he saw the early stages of an embryo and he was shocked at its resemblance that it looked like a leech. And he told these Arab students that if you have asked me these questions 30 years back, I would have not been able to answer 50% because embryology, it is a new field. And embryology, it is regarding the stages of the development of human being in a mother's womb. And later on, all the verses and hadiths related to embryology, he added in his book, The Developing Human Being, the third edition. And you know, in medical college, if you want to get very good marks, you refer to the book by Professor Keith Moore, The Developing Human Beings. If you want to get passing marks, you refer to the book by Dr. Inderjeet Singh. And later on, this book, The Developing Human Being, it got the award for the best book on embryology written by a single author. And it was translated into various languages of the world. So Professor Dr. Keith Moore, he was shocked regarding this. And he said that how can a book be written 1400 years ago talk about all this? So he said that I do not have any objection in agreeing that there's only one God and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a messenger. Imagine Professor Keith Moore, he said that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Tariq, chapter number 86, verse number 5 and 6. فَلْيَنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ مِنْ مَخُلِقْ خُلِقَ مِنْ مَا إِنْ دَافِقْ يَخْرُجُ مِنْ بَيْنِ السُّلْبِ وَالطَّرَائِبِ See it not, that how man is created. He's created from a drop emitted coming from between the backbone and the ribs. And we know that before a child is born, the genital organs, they are between the 11th and the 12th rib and the vertebral column. For the males and for the females. So these genital organs, later on when a child is born, they descend. For the males, they are the testes and for the females, they are the ovaries. So for the males, they descend down till the top of the scrotum. And for the females, they descend down till the true pelvis. So these genital organs, they descend down. But yet, even after descending down, the nerve supply is yet there between the 11th and the 12th rib and the vertebral column. And the nerve supply is also there from the iota. So the genital organs for a human being, before a child is born, they are between the 11th and the 12th rib and 
the vertebral column. Furthermore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about nutfa in no less than 11 different places. It is mentioned in Surah Hajj, chapter number 22, verse number 5. Also in Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 13. That we have created human beings from a minute quantity of liquid. Further, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Sajda, chapter number 32, verse number 8. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created human beings from sulala. The Arabic word sulala means quintessence and best part of the whole. So the glorious Quran, besides saying that he has created the human beings from a minute quantity of liquid, it says that he has created them from quintessence and best part of the whole. Further Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Surah Insan, chapter number 76, verse number 2. We have created the human beings from nutfatin amshaj, minute quantity of mingled fluid. And today we know the male fluids and the female fluids and the surrounding fluids, they are responsible for the birth of the child. Al Aziz, the Almighty. Al Wadud, the All Loving. Al Tawab, the Acceptor of Your Return. Al Razaq, the Provider. Al-Raqib, the All-Watchful. Walillahi al-Asma'u al-Husna, to Allah belongs the beautiful names. Fad'u'uhu biha, to call him upon them. To understand more of Allah's beautiful names, join me, your brother Majid Mahmoud, on my new series about understanding Allah's beautiful names on Peace TV. Don't miss the chance to comprehend the seamless explanation of Allah's beautiful names in Understanding Allah's Beautiful Names, next on Peace TV. field of genetics we know the sperm is responsible for determining the sex of the child and the 23rd pair of chromosomes it is responsible for determining the sex of the child if it is XX then it is a female if it is XY then it is a male so if X of the sperm fertilizes then a female is born if Y of the sperm fertilizes then a male is born Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Najm, chapter number 53, verse number 45 and 46, that we have created human beings from a minute quantity of liquid, which is ejaculated. Further, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Qiyamah, chapter number 75, verse number 37 to 39, Nutfatam mim maniyi yumna, that we have created the human beings from a minute quantity of sperm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they have created the human beings from nutfa, minute quantity of liquid. Made that nutfa into alaqa, a leech-like substance. Made that alaqa into mudra and then gave it sex males and females. In our country, India, there are many people, especially the mother-in-law, they blame the daughter-in-laws that why did you give birth to a female child? But today, after science has advanced, we have come to know that it is the male which is responsible for determining the sex of the child. So if the mother-in-law has to blame anyone, she should blame the son, but not the daughter-in-law. 
Anyways, it's in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if she has to blame anyone, she should blame the son. Furthermore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Zumur, chapter number 39, verse number 6, that we have made the human being into stages, one stage after another, in three veils of darkness. The veils of darkness are the anterior abdominal wall and the uterine wall. Further, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 12 to 14, we have created the human beings from nutfa, minute quantity of liquid. Made that nutfa into alaqa. Made that alaqa into mudra, chewed like lamb. Made that mudra into a vama, bones. And clothed the bones with flesh. And then made a totally different creation out of it. Glory be to Allah, who is the best of creators. These verses, they talk about the various embryological changes in the initial stages of the development of a human being in the mother's womb in great detail. It says that we have made the human beings from nutfa, minute quantity of liquid, and which we discussed earlier. And further it says, made that nutfa into alaqa. The Arabic word alaqa, it has got three meanings. One is leech-like substance, second is something which clings, and third is congealed clot of blood. And today we know that the embryo, it acts like a blood sucker. It gains all the nutrition from the mother's womb through the placenta. So the embryo, it acts like a blood sucker. So the glorious Quran, besides saying that the embryo, it looks like a leech, it even says that it behaves like a leech. The second meaning of the Arabic word alaqa is something which clings. And we know that the embryo, throughout all the nine months, the embryo, it clings to the uterine wall. And the third meaning of the Arabic word alaqa is congealed clot of blood. And we know that in the early stages of an embryo, the blood, it gets clotted in the blood vessels. Alhamdulillah, all the three meanings of the Arabic word alaqa, they are in perfect conformity with modern embryology. Father Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we have placed it into qarar in makin, a protected place. And it is between the anterior abdominal wall and the uterine wall. Further, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that made that alaqa into mudra, chewed like lamb. Now, Prophet Keith Moore, he took a plus as a seal and he bit it. And it looked like a chewed like lamb. And later on, he saw the marks of his teeth on it. It looked like so mites. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further says that we have made that mudra, chewed lamb, into azama. That is bones. Clothed the bones with flesh and then created a different creation. So what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mean when he says that created it into a different creation? We know the early stages of an embryo that are different. And later on, the child it starts developing the head, limbs, etc. So this is different from the early stages of an embryo. And Professor Keith Moore, he said that the glorious Quran is very specific in talking regarding the stages of an embryo. Whereas modern embryology, it says stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4. The glorious Quran makes it very simple by saying, made a human being from nutfa, minus quantity of liquid, made that nutfa into alaqa, leech like substance, made that alaqa into mudra, made that mudra into idama, and then clothed it with flesh and made a complete different creation. So modern embryology, it makes it very difficult by saying stage 1, stage 2, etc. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further says in Surah Hajj, chapter number 22, verse number 5. Ya ayyuhan nasu, in kuntum fi raibi min al-ba'as, fa inna khalaqnakum min turab, thumma min nutfa, thumma min alaqa, thumma min mudgatim mukhallaqa, wa ghayra mukhallaqa. That we have created the human beings from nutfa, minute quantity of liquid, made that nutfa into alaqa, made that alaqa into mudgha, chewed lamb, partly formed and partly unformed. Now this verse was given to Dr. Marshall Johnson who was there in the Daniel University in Philadelphia, USA and he was the head in the Department of Anatomy. So Dr. Marshall Johnson, he said, the glorious Quran, if we call these stages of embryology incomplete, it would be wrong because many things are completed. Whereas 
if we call it complete, it would be wrong because many things are incomplete. So the glorious Quran is very specific in saying partly formed and partly unformed. Further Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Sajda chapter number 32 verse number 9. وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمَعَ وَالْأَبْصَارِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Sajda chapter number 32 verse number 9 that we have given you the faculty of hearing and sight. Further Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Insan chapter number 76 verse number 2. نَبْتَلِيهِ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ سَمِيعًا بَصِيرًا that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is we have given the human beings the faculty of hearing and sight. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he has given us the faculty of hearing and sight. And today after science is advanced, we have come to know the 22nd day of the 5th month, the child it develops its ear and it can hear. And later on, its eyes start to open. So first it develops the ear. And there was an experiment done on the child whose mother was a typist. And after the child was born, the child was kept with various other children in front of a typewriter. And the child did not get scared because the child was used to hearing the typewriter in the mother's womb. And that's the reason our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said that a mother, if she's pregnant, she should read the glorious Quran. And that's the reason I think that my mother, she used to hear my father's talks. And that is how, Alhamdulillah, I'm giving talks. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further talks about fingerprints. In Surah Qiyamah, chapter number 75, verse number 3 and 4. The unbelievers say that how will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrect us after we have been decomposed? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we will not only bring back their bones, but we will bring back the very tips of their fingers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the fingerprints. It was later on in 1880, Sir Francis Cole, he discovered the fingerprinting methods. And today, the FBI, CID, CIA, all these organizations, they are using the fingerprinting methods to find out the criminals. And no two fingerprints in the world, they are similar, even if they are twins. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks regarding the fingerprints. I would like to end my talk with the saying, of Dr. Tagata Tagashin. Dr. Tagata Tagashin, he was shocked regarding what the glorious Quran talks about pain receptors. And we know that besides the brain, even the pain receptors, they are responsible for pain. That's the reason when a patient with a burn comes to a doctor, the doctor pricks a pin. And if the patient feels pain, the doctor is happy. It's a superficial burn. Whereas if the patient does not feel pain, the doctor is sad. It's a deep burn. The pain receptors have been damaged. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 56. Inna alladheena kafaru bi ayatina sawfa nusulihim nara kullama nuzirat juluduhum baddallahum juludan ghayra hal yazooqul azab. As for those who reject our signs, we shall cast them into the fire and as often as their skins are roasted, we shall give them fresh skins so that they shall feel the pain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, As to those who reject our signs, we shall cast them into the fire, and as often as their skins are roasted, we shall give them fresh skins, so that they shall feel the pain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks regarding the pain receptors. So, Dr. Tagata Tagashin, he said, that how can a book being written 1400 years ago talk about pain receptors? It has to be from Almighty God. And in the 8th medical conference, held in Riyadh, in the conference itself, he said, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. There is no God but Allah and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his messenger. Wa akhru da'wan, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Jazakallah, Brother Farik, for that informative talk. In conclusion, I, on behalf of the Islamic International School, express great appreciation to all the honored guests and esteemed parents for your presence. I also thank the research team of Islamic Research Foundation for the diligence and hard work. A great thanks to our alims, quarries, teachers, which will help us to bloom in the hereafter and reach towering heights of success, inshallah. Our determination to achieve is massive, explosive, waiting to erupt with massive energy. 
for weak desires do not produce great results. Only burning desires produce great results. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah an kabut chapter 29, verse number 69, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبْلَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And as for those who strive in our ways, we will surely guide them to our path, and indeed Allah is with the doers of the good. Jazakallah, wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All people of the world, can we spare a little justice? Can we spare a little peace? Oh, the children of war. Oh, people of the world, can we spare a little love? Interests. The basic characteristics of Islamic finance and how it differs from the conventional finance. The risk shifting, this is the conventional bank, means it is only loan with interest. Financial meltdown. This is riba, prohibited in Quran and the Sunnah. But what the alternative for Islamic bank? Dr. Hussein Hamid Hassan. Islamic finance is based on equity. What does it mean? Islamic financing is risk sharing, not risk shifting. Learn how these problems can be avoided through Islamic banking and finance system in Islamic Financial System every Thursday at 3.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 2 a.m. UK on Peace TV. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK, B151TH. Pound account number 011 IBAN GB49ARAY 30008301132301. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace Team, the solution for humanity.